Good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. Usually in these videos, I like to show you an artifact that sheds more light on Poe's life and works. But tonight I'm going to go in the opposite direction. By showing you a letter that leaves us with more questions than answers, that makes Poe a little bit more mysterious. In fact, it was written by the woman to whom he dedicated the poem An Enigma. So let's find out who she was, what she wrote, and what she did in tonight's installment of The Curator's Crypt. So here it is. It's a letter written on September 29th, 1858 by Sarah Anna Lewis, who we also know as Stella. So that's almost, a, it's a week short of nine years to the day after Poe's death. She's writing it to Martin Van Buren Moore, who's a journalist about to write an article about Poe. So since he knew that Stella had known Poe, he wrote to her to ask her, what was he like? What can you give me as far as information about his life? And this letter is her response. But just who was Sarah Anna Lewis or Stella? She was a minor poet from Baltimore who met Poe up in New York about 1846. So she would have been roughly 22 years old and he would have been 37 at the time. He's at a low point in his life. This is after the failure of his magazine, the Broadway Journal, the magazine collapse, leaving in heavy debt. His wife is suffering from the final stages of tuberculosis. She's going to die in early 1847. He's desperate. And along came Stella. Her husband was a wealthy lawyer named Sylvanus Lewis, who'd been a fan of Poe's for a while. He'd written him as early as 1841 to send him some cryptograms. Those are secret writing. Poe had challenged the readers of Graham's magazine to send him any sort of cryptogram or puzzle that he couldn't solve, and he proudly solved all the ones he got except for the one that was a trick that couldn't be solved, but that's another story. So Poe got to know him peripherally, and when they're both living in New York, that's when they approached Poe, and they had a business proposition. Stella was a poet, just not a terribly good one. Poe desperately needed an influx of cash. So Sylvanus decided, why don't we just pay you to help her write her poetry, to give her some editorial notes and revisions, to try to clear things up a little bit, and also a little bit of extra money to write some puff pieces, some glowing reviews of her works, so it'll spread the word about how great a poet she is, even though she's really not. This was a practice called puffing, or puffery. And in principle, Poe hated puffery. Even from an early age, he hated the idea that authors were puffing up other authors' works who just happened to be their friends to try to help their work sell better. He thought that a work should rise and fall on the strengths of its own merit not on how many friends the author happened to have who could write nice reviews of the works. But at this point, Poe was so desperate he had to accept the money, even though he kind of hated it. In fact, there's descriptions of him seeing Stella coming up his front steps, and he'd duck out the back door just to hide from her. He was, he was so sick of this arrangement. Of course, he was always cordial to her face, always polite, and there's about six letters of his to her that still survive, and they're all nice, polite letters where he expresses gratitude for all the financial support that she's given him. He nicknames her Sister Anna, so he thinks of her like a sister, this kind angel who's ministered to him and helped him through the tough times. But maybe that's not exactly what Stella was. And we've got one of her books right here I'd like to show you. This is Sappho, A Tragedy. And there's... Stella Lewis. This is actually her favorite portrait of herself. Now, I told you her name was Sarah Anna Lewis, but 
she let her decide that wasn't a classy enough name for her, so she went with the first name only, kind of like Madonna, Cher, Prince. So you'll see it signed Stella right there. And this is, like many of the books in the Poe Museum, an autographed copy. And there's even a note from the donor who is James H. Witte, who is an eccentric turn-of-the-century Poe collector. And he says down here that it might seem from the scattered evidence of today that Mrs. Lewis merely worked Poe to secure favorable press notices of her poems. So even by the early 20th century, people were pretty sure that she was just kind of using Poe. But he needed the work, and she was able to help him and his mother-in-law, and in gratitude, he did dedicate a poem to her. It's not a love poem. It's a sonnet making fun of sonnets, saying how bad sonnets are. And a sonnet is a 14-line rhymed poem. There's certain rules for being a sonnet. And Poe's made a sonnet making fun of sonnets and saying how they're just frivolous little things, except for this particular sonnet is not frivolous because it contains the names of something great. So I'll read you just a little bit and see if you can catch the names. Seldom we find, says Solomon Dunn Dunce, half an idea in the profoundest sonnet. Through all the flimsy things we see at once, as easily as through a Naples bonnet. Trash of all trash, how can a lady don it? Yet heavier far than your Petrarchian stuff. Al Downey nonsense, that's the faintest puff. Twirls into trunk paper the while you can con it. And veritably, Saul is right enough. The general tuckernities are errant. Bubbles ephemeral and so transparent. But this is now, you may depend upon it, stable, opaque, immortal. All by dint of the dear names that lie concealed within it. So did you catch the names? Well, underline the first letter of the first line. The second letter of the second line the third of the third, the fourth of the fourth, the fifth of the fifth, and so forth, it spells out Sarah Anna Lewis. So her name really is just hidden in the lines of the poem. So definitely nothing there speaks of great devotion or love for her. So this isn't one of his great outpourings of emotion. This is just sort of a, a silly little poem for her. And this is the one that was eventually entitled An Enigma because it does hide a secret. But I just gave away the secret. So that's an enigma no more. That leaves us with Stella's letter here. So to give you just a little bit of context, Poe's mother-in-law, Mariah Poe Clem, was a widow. So when Poe died, she had nowhere else to go, and she lived with different Poe admirers over the coming decades, including the Lewises. So, right about the time of this letter, she'd been living with the Lewises, and she tried to endear herself to Stella by telling her, you know, you are my Eddie's favorite. He dedicated his poem, Annabelle Lee, to you. And it, it kind of makes sense a little bit, you know, Sarah Anna Lewis, or he called her Sister Anna and Annabelle Lee. It would kind of make sense if it weren't all just a lie. But Poe's mother-in-law had sort of a conniving way of endearing herself to people until she wore out her welcome. And for a while, she ingratiated herself with the Lewises. To make matters worse, one of the reasons why Poe's mother-in-law was destitute was because Stella, and she took credit for this, helped convince her to sign over the rights to Poe's works to Rufus W. Griswold probably in exchange for him compiling the complete works of Edgar Allan Poe. So even though Poe's complete works sold very well after his death, made a lot of money, she didn't see any of it. She just got some free copies of the book here and there that she could sell or she could give to people who were helping sponsor her. And Stella not only took credit for that, but she also helped Griswold with his book, helped supply him with manuscripts and information about Poe's life so Griswold could write that first biography of Poe, the, only, the one that portrayed him as a madman, drunkard, opium addict, a scoundrel, evil, horrible, despicable person. 
part of that was Stella's fault. But Mariah Klim needed a place to go. Stella lived in New York City at the time and offered her a home. But then just before this letter was written, Stella and Sylvanus divorced. It was a very acrimonious divorce. And Mariah took the husband's side, guaranteeing she had an enemy for life with Stella. So keep that in mind when we see what this letter says. Now, we start out with some just basic greetings. I have not time to reply to your letter, which reached me the day before, and, and so forth like that. So she's writing to say, you know, I'll, I'll help you out with your article about Poe if you just give me time. It says, I will if you can wait. It was his last request of me. Write my life. You know me better than anyone else, he said. Now, this is a claim that Stella made multiple times to different people that before Poe died, he told her, write my life story, write my biography after I'm gone. I'm not entirely buying it. There had been articles written about Poe by much greater writers like James Russell Lowell wrote a nice long article about Poe. There are other people that Poe knew who were great writers who could have written his life story, who probably knew him a lot better. So he could have just asked one of them. And also, if he really did, just before his death, ask her to write his life story, why didn't she write it? Did she just never get around to fulfilling his final wish? But she did help out Griswold, and later she helped out Poe's English biographer, John Henry Ingram. Although a lot of the information she gave him was falsified or self-aggrandizing, you know, it's showing her as the only true heir to Poe's greatness and the only one he really cared about, the one who knew him better than anybody else. Just a lot of falsifications there. But the letter continues, and this is the good part. If anyone else should write it, do not permit the name of that old woman who calls herself his mother-in-law to appear in it. I have heard that she is not his mother-in-law, that she was something else to him. Anyhow, I believe that she was the black cat of his life, and that she at last strangled him to death. I will tell you about it when we meet. So she thought that Mariah Klim was the black cat of Poe's life, the one who ruined his life. Now, Mariah Klim is no saint. She was sometimes devious, sometimes conniving, but she usually did it to help Edgar rather than to hurt him. But the enigmatic thing here is that Stella doesn't give us any details other than that. She must have told Martin Van Buren more, but we just don't know what she told him. I mean... How was she the black cat of Poe's life? How did she strangle him to death? Metaphorically, not really. But fortunately, we have the manuscript for the article that Martin Van Buren Moore wrote using Stella's information. So here's the passage, way near the back where he references this. He had many dear and devoted friends among the female writers and artists of his times. One of them afterwards became a friend and correspondent of mine. I allude to the gifted Maryland poet Estelle Anna Lewis, Poe's Stella. And he mentions down here that I am indebted for many facts in regard to Poe's life. She stated positively that Poe was born in Baltimore, not Boston. Not true, born in Boston. How she knew, I did not ask. It was she who told me that the black cat of Poe's life was the mother-in-law, Mrs. Klim. You remember how the story goes. He had walled the monster up in his tomb. His mother-in-law, with her stealthy feline character, was forever in his mansion here. Well, that didn't clear anything up. So how exactly was Poe's mother-in-law the black cat of his life? 
And what does this mean when Stella says that she wasn't really his mother-in-law, that she was something else to him? Well, we know that she was the biological mother of Poe's wife, Virginia Clem Poe. So by definition, she was Poe's mother-in-law. So what else was she to Poe? None of this really clears that up. So what do you think? Was Stella just making this all up? Or was there really something behind this that we just can't decipher? Let us know down in the comments what you think. So if you'd like to help us preserve precious Poe pieces like this enigmatic letter from Stella Lewis to Martin Van Buren Moore about Poe, why not help support the Poe Museum or become a member at poemuseum.org. And until next time, thanks for joining us, and I leave you with more gratuitous footage of the Poe Museum's Black Cats doing Poe Museum cat stuff.